Hello everyone and welcome to this Friday afternoon's comparison review which I am dubbing the I'm somewhat tired beer review but I can't take a nap because it's just too dang humid. It's about 88 degrees right now nice sheen of sweat on me but it's not as bad as usual because whew, it's much better having less hair. So Spent the last three hours listening to Mr. Medicare's Year of the Chud review. Funny and depressing at the same time. That's my favorite kind of humor. Funny yet depressing at the same time. You know? I'm glad he's still around and, um, you know, I, I hope he gets over his various health issues, man. <laughs> Guy's got a lot of problems. Um, but anyways, what are we comparing? Well, you might have mentioned remembered earlier that I thought, huh, I compared the two different kinds of Sapporo. Why don't I go and compare the two different kinds of 100% malt Japanese beers then? And lo and behold, I go and look it up, and I find out that this one is classified as a Euro Pale Lager, and this one is an American Lager. So both of them are 100% malt, but they are different styles. So, what's the difference in between a European pale lager, uh, you know, a European pale lager and an American lager? Well, a European pale lager is slightly more characterized, is characterized by a slightly more noticeable hop present, I mean, malt presence. It's not as strongly hopped as a um, American lager would be. So, you definitely have more of a taste of the malts there. Um, American lager, you know, is so, let me just boil it down. More or less descended from the Munich Hells lager, more or less descended from the German Pilsner. One's just kind of more dry than the other. But, um, yes, yeah, so it's not really going to be the perfect comparison that I was hoping for, but it's going to be interesting nonetheless. And this time I actually remembered my palate clearing water beforehand. And I have the two similarly shaped glasses. Um, they're not the same volume, but I'm not going to be pouring all the way to the top. And um, yeah, going to be on this side, it's going to be the um, Sapporo. This side is going to be the Kirin Ichiban. So yeah, I don't want to say left and right because it's actually the opposite of what the actual camera said, <laughs> you know. So like I'm holding this up and this is actually my left hand, but it doesn't feel like my left hand because mirroring, non-mirror non image mirrors, are, they, they confuse me. So, you know, this side and this side. Okay, so without much further ado, I'm going to do this one by one. As you know, because the heads on these recede fairly quickly. And just let's get started now, shall we? So this one is 5.2 ABV. I'm give it a fairly vigorous pour. So you can see the head here. So a nice golden yellow, nice carbonated, fizzy, white to off-white head. Ready to crackery malts with a hint of old world style hops. Yeah. My light's on, it's just for some reason, it's not really showing bright. Okay, onto the Kirinichi bond here. So it's 5.0 ABV, and this one is not pouring clean out the wide mouth here. Okay, going to throw down some towels. So, this one, it's a straw yellow with a fizzy white head. Much more noble hot presence in the nose. And what malting is there is much more crackery. Let's go and top this up a little bit here. 
so it's about the same levels. Okay, onto the pallet. Going to the support reserve. Back to the support reserve here. Thirst quenching. I don't know my voice cracks so much now. So it's thirst, thirst quenching. Definitely a sort of honeyed, bready malts. But up front, a mild level of hot bitterness that persists throughout. But very soft. Even in the carbonation. Carbonation is not very prickly. It's there, but it's soft on the palate. Okay. Now back to the theory in Ichiban. Much, much drier. It has a thinner mouthfeel and body. Carbonation is a bit more prickly. Um, it's much more hop forward, but that's not to say that the hops are particularly strong. It's noble hop bitterness. So some mild grassiness and spiciness We're on top of uh, barely perceptible crackery malts. Finish is very clean. Okay. Back to Sapporo, going to top it off a little bit, build up that head again. The top note in this is very malty, it's very much those um, bready malts. Kind of that honeyed wheat note to it. Of course, there's no wheat in it, but it makes me think of honey wheat bread. Finish, too, is also clean. Again, slightly thicker body, slightly more perceptible sweetness. Actually, a bit more than slightly more perceptible sweetness. I would say... Um, quite a deal more. I would say moderately, moderately more perceptible sweetness. Excuse me. Back to the Kirin Ichiban. In contrast to the Sapporo, Kirin Ichiban's top note is basically those grassy hops. I have to say, this is actually more different than the two Sapporos put side by side. You know, one is just vastly, vastly much more dry and thinner in body.
So you can kind of really see the difference here, you know. Um, actually, I can, but it's not really showing up on the camera. There's so this one is much lighter yellow than this one, which has almost a golden hue to it, especially when the light is going straight through it, which you can't see. I can see it because the light of the monitor is shining through in my direction, but there's no background light to go through. I could open this a little bit, but then it would be just too much light and go right through it. But yeah, very different. Both of these beers, there's not really much in the way to write home in re you know, in regards to flavor. One is sort of in one is sort of, I would say, a decent example of you know, a European lager, and one is basically very much an American lager, um, standard American lager. Both styles are not styles that have much in the way of character. Um, as for myself, what would I go with? Well, as a beer, I find that the Sapporo, is, you know, Sapporo Reserve, is much more enjoyable as just a beer to drink by itself. Whereas... The Kirin Ichiban is probably a little bit better for pairing with food just because that hot presence, that sharper hot presence, that dryness probably clears the palate a lot better than, um, you know, uh, Euro Lager would. But both serve the same purpose. What do I prefer? And then I would say if I was finished doing like yard work or something, or if I was eating spicy food, like say a spicy curry, I'd go with this one. If I was just sitting in a bar, you know, it's not particularly hot out, um, I'm eating something that's got a bit more sweetness to it. Like, say, sushi with, you know, that vinegar rice, you know, that, um, what they put on the rice to hold the sushi together. And it's definitely sweet. I would definitely think it would pair better with this one. So, grilled meats, spicy things, go with the Kirin Ichiban. Sushi, um, teriyaki, beef, perhaps. This one, the Sapporo. Um, if you're having sashimi, again, go with sake, same as if you're going to be having shellfish, go with sake. Um, I think those are better pairings than beer is. And, um, yeah, so it's really, it's really context dependent here, which beer you go with. Uh, I can't say that I'm much prefer one or the other. Neither of these are really beers you're going to be like mulling over. Um, they're, they're not beers that I would buy for the enjoyment of beer itself. 
these are beers that you would that would be perfectly serviceable for Japanese restaurant food. And um, the differences, the stark differences in between the two here, due to the different styles, kind of demonstrates um, how how things, how to pair things, you know, how to pair things with food. One after the other. No water in between. Let's see. Yeah, it definitely makes it, that difference seem a lot more stark. So, yeah. Sapporo Reserve Beer versus Kirin Ichiban All Malt. Both 100% malt beers. Both of them not really complex or exciting beers. Both of them perfectly serviceable for pairing with food or for just drinking without the without the um, idea of focusing on the beer in mind. You know what I mean? And yeah, just be aware of that when you're pairing with food. And I think that's the main lesson here with this one kind of not kind of an unexpected lesson really uh, on my part i wasn't expecting it to be this the differences to be this stark but in seeing these stark differences realizing what each would be good for so yeah that folks is your beer review for this afternoon that's pretty much probably all I'm going to drink. And drink from two of them. No, I'm not going to do that. I already, uh, I already spilled a little bit of beer on the floor. I'm not going to spill any more beer. What do you think I am? Crazy? I'll toast from this one. And that is your comparison review for this afternoon, folks. Come by.